What is going on, Alpha Males? Welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast. Hopefully I can say welcome back. The podcast where we talk about what it means to be a man. With God at the center where he belongs, made in his image, strong and dominant, and we don't apologize for it. Today's an episode I'm rather excited about. A couple of times we've covered Everyday Carry as entire episodes on this podcast and surely mentioned it many more. Today's going to be Everyday Carry, but in a different way. How about Everyday Carry for young men, young men in school, or just Everyday Carry, you know, in a restricted environment where you can't have weapons? Do you even bother Everyday Carrying in that environment, or do you even bother letting your kids, especially like your teenage son... And this could apply to girls too, but this is the Alpha Male Podcast. Should your kids even be considering everyday carry? Are they even interested in it? Or what about you, again, in an environment that doesn't allow weapons? Or maybe none of that applies to you and you can carry weapons, but maybe this is an episode of other stuff that you maybe should be carrying that you're not. Because as much as I carry a gun, a gun does not solve every problem. As much as I carry a knife, a knife does not solve every problem. Plug in the bio if you want to skip it. Skip around 3 minutes and 45 seconds. And hopefully, God willing, you'll hear from me again in the main body of the episode. Who am I? A question we should all ask ourselves. I am, first and foremost, a servant of God made in his very own image, a follower of Jesus Christ, a simple man called by God to the Great Commission to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Next, a little bit about my background and what God has allowed me to do and blessed me to do in life. Grew up what most would consider very poor in the backwoods of the southeastern and mid-Atlantic United States. Hunting and fishing. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. So a decorated Marine Corps combat veteran. Infantry assaultman. After the combat tours... I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also a veteran of law enforcement, I served with LAPD. I was a sworn peace officer, a cop for LAPD. I worked regular patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. One of those more specialized assignments was warrant service, fugitive recovery. Also had some other law enforcement roles. I am an FBI certified firearms instructor and been certified by another three-letter government agency in a lot of firearms and training things. I've also been a private contractor, worked in the private sector, Pertaining to tactics and gunfighting and protecting America from enemies foreign and domestic. I served as the commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters in a large metropolitan area. That was our primary mission, to stop active shooters, which sadly are a thing in America today. I've also been blessed to do quite a bit of competition shooting Started my first formal competitions even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. I had one more shooting competitions than I can remember. I have competed in all manner of disciplines in shooting. I've been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion. West Coast regional champion. Like I said, been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I mentioned hunting. I've hunted to put meat on the table. Starting when I was a child, I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide, hunting and slaying all manner of beast. 
And I don't want to apologize for that. Humbled to be the host of three podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, Alpha Male Podcast, and Gumfighter Life. Obviously, as things not mentioned, I've been blessed to do many other things. But, again, first and foremost, I'm a servant. A servant of God, a believer and follower of the Bible, the Word, Jesus Christ. And I don't apologize for that. With that, let's transition into today's topic. Alright, Alphas, a couple of caveats here. Number one, one of the Ten Commandments is honor your father and mother. So whatever things you think you should be carrying, obey and honor your father and mother. Fathers and mothers out there, you know your kid far better than I do and how mature they are and what personality they have. I'm going to mention, let's say, ferro rods in this episode. If your kid is a pyromaniac, they probably shouldn't get a ferro rod and go to school with it. They're your kids. They're not my kids. And if again, if you are a young man or young woman, honor your father and mother. With those caveats in place, listening for a while, you know I'm big on everyday carry. Perhaps it's time to get your your son going in the way that he should go. Or perhaps you're everyday carrying and looking for some other cool stuff to carry. The number one thing you should always carry is God and the Word of God, the Sword of the Spirit. So some way to have access to the Bible. Most of us have a smartphone and most smartphones you can download the Bible on. And even if you don't have internet or service or anything, you can still access the Bible. Those are awesome. Hopefully your child is into the Word of God or you're into the Word of God. Those small Bibles do come in handy. I have one in my baby bug out bag. My bailout bag has a Bible in it. I'm thinking about this mostly for kids in school, let's say high school, college. You probably have a backpack. Real popular in my day was Jansport, and I was a poor, poor kid growing up. And I don't know how, but I managed to get a Jansport backpack. My mom must have worked hard and saved up and got it for me, and I probably didn't appreciate it. I just had to have one because all the cool kids have one, and I, I had one at one point. And I remember most of them have a little pocket in the front. Perhaps that pocket could be set aside For not your books, not your pens, not your pencils, but for your EDC type stuff. Your everyday carry. So other than the sword of the spirit, the two main things that I carry are a handgun, a firearm, and a knife. Both those right off the bat you probably can't have. What's the handgun for? Well, it's a weapon. I'm a firm believer in knowing hand-to-hand combat. It might be time to teach your son hand-to-hand combat, or it might be time for you to learn hand-to-hand combat since you can't have a weapon or can't have a purpose-built weapon. We touched on the smartphone briefly. That's obviously important, especially for kids to get a hold of their parents or for you to get a hold of whoever you need to get a hold of. There are some ways you can enhance that, some apps that you can have. The U.S. Army Survival Guide you can download. It's a really cool thing to have on your phone, the U.S. Army Survival Guide. It's either free or a couple of dollars on your app store. I think worth having if you ever plan on going in the woods or anything like that. Some kind of map or mapping device. If you're out somewhere quite a bit without service, you may look at one of the apps that lets you have maps when you don't have service. I was actually out scouting around new area today, and one of the things that I use quite often is the compass that comes on my iPhone. But just knowing how to use that, it even shows, it even shows altitude. It shows cardinal directions as the compass normally would also shows your coordinates on there so you can take a screenshot of that and send it to whoever you're going if you have to go somewhere if you're getting in trouble you can take a screenshot of that and text it and say this is where i am if you don't know where you are maybe your iphone does know where you are there's ways to track cell phones and stuff like that i was a police officer but that stuff takes a lot more time than just somebody needing to know where you are and getting your uh picture of your gps coordinates I know that there are ways to like track your kid's phone and stuff like that. I, I don't know anything about that. You guys probably know more about that than I do. If you have kids, I'm going to stay in my lane and try and speak to what I know. I just looked on the App Store, at least for my Apple. The Army Survival Skills Official Army Survival Manual, $1.99. 
Yeah, Army Survival Guide and flashcards are free. SAS Survival Guide Light looks like that one is free as well. It's a good reminder to me because I had that on my old phone, but old phone wasn't working right. I got a new phone and I forgot to install it on my new phone. It's a good reminder for me as well. But you know your kid's probably going to have their cell phone or you're probably going to have your cell phone. So having those apps on there can come in quite useful. The other big thing that I often carry on me that should be no problem for your kid to have is a flashlight. It doesn't have to be some big crazy tactical flashlight with a knurled end and 5,000 lumens and looks like the Luxor in Las Vegas at night. Just a good handy flashlight. I know there's a flashlight on the phone, but that thing really is kind of an afterthought. It is not a good purpose-built flashlight, but a good flashlight. And they're not nearly as expensive as a good flashlight used to be. You can get a good quality flashlight. USB micro stream, uh, stream light USB micro stream is kind of my go-to EDC light. Kids are a little bit younger, you don't want to have anything that nice, they might break it, they might lose it. Walmart sells headlamps that I use all the time at night. They're cheap and easy and they work, and they're literally, I think, a dollar. Buy them several at a time, I use them until they don't work anymore, I forget and leave them on and I throw them away, they're a dollar. But if your kid's a little bit older and they take care of stuff, that uh, Streamlight, MicroStream USB or something like it, like a Stylus Pro or something like that. Those are good, handy little EDC lights. If you want them to really get hooked on the EDC world, just ask them to carry it, if they will, for a couple of days. And I'd be surprised if they didn't use it and didn't think it was cool or them and their buddies are looking for something and they use it. Drop something, go to look for it, go outside at night. They're super handy. That'd be like a number one way to get somebody not just a kid into edc that wasn't into it is maybe just a flashlight they're non-threatening they're super useful they're good handy little thing to have especially modern ones they can be very bright and weigh very little talking about that pocket on the front of your kid's backpack that they probably have this is where i talked about knowing your kid or knowing yourself if you're a young man but a ferro rod I carry one of those all the time. Now, ferro rod is a way to start a fire. When you just look at it, it's literally just a small metal rod. And I mean small, like some of the ones that I carry are less than an inch long and maybe 0.3 or thereabouts inches in diameter. They're small. They make some with holes in them, so you can literally put them on a keychain. Something I do for my wife's pack for my you know bailout bag baby bug out bag is I have one on a piece of 550 cord that literally looks like any other toggle you'd use to zip up a jacket or zip up a zipper you could have that on your backpack as just like a little toggle and nobody would know what it was and it is a way to be able to start a fire and make a fire doubt anybody looking at that would know what it was if you even got a bigger one that would say a couple of inches long almost nobody's going to know what that is if they're not into the EDC world or the bushcrafting world I remember starting lots of fires as a kid, I'm not going to lie, but I was allowed to kind of go and make fires and stuff in the backyard. So I didn't really worry about starting fires inside or somewhere I wasn't supposed to because I had plenty of places I could make a fire in the backyard. But again, know yourself, know your kid. Another one, they're probably going to have pens and pencils. There's all kinds of tactical pens. I'd say stay away from that if you're in school. But just a good quality metal pen can come in handy for a lot of things. Use your imagination on that. But a good quality metal pen. And I have one in LAPD that I had for years and years and years. I don't carry it anymore because I just carry a Sharpie. The number one thing I tend to write on during the day is myself. But just a good metal zebra pen. They're not super expensive. I have one that lasted years and years and years. I don't know how many refills I put in it. But if you don't lose them, they last a long time. And a good sturdy metal pen can come in handy for a lot of things. Sadly, school shootings are a thing in our society today. I'm not telling you what to do on that. I'm just telling you to consider. This next one, again, know your kids. But I did find out recently there are these little glass breaker bracelets. If your kid's prone to vandalism or something, probably don't get them this. But it's literally a little teeny bracelet of like shot cord. And it just looks like a regular bracelet. And I'm not into wearing bracelets. But again, they could just put it in that front pouch. Literally, you hold it between your two fingers and you pull it back and snap this little uh, tungsten bead that's on there to shatter glass. It might come in handy for a lot of scenarios, a lot of good scenarios where your kid needs to escape from something. So think about that if your kid is mature enough to handle that and not do something stupid with it. 
at least not something stupid that'll get them in trouble. We talked about fire starting. Now, I've never owned one of these firsthand, but another thing you could have that is pretty cool. Those There's a company called Wazoo, and they make the survival necklaces and things like that. They make one for starting fires, and if you look this up and look at it, it doesn't look like anything survival or bushcraft related at all. It just looks like just a necklace that somebody would wear. That's pretty cool. I'm not into wearing jewelry and necklaces. I almost never wear my wedding ring because I lose them all the time unless we're going out and my wife asks me to wear it. I'm just not big on jewelry. But the bracelets, necklaces, stuff like that, again, you could just put them in a pouch. Talking about the bracelets, another real easy thing to get them to just put in their pack and forget about if they're into any kind of making stuff, doing stuff like that, is one of the paracord bracelets. Again, I don't like jewelry, almost never wear one, but I have one on my belt today when I was out scouting. I had some other paracord on me, but it's there's a lot of paracord in those little bracelets. I generally don't use them because I generally have other paracord on me, but if I really needed a lot of paracord, like to build a shelter, if I'd gotten stuck out overnight, twisted my ankle or something, definitely wouldn't have cared about using that bracelet. Cheap, you see them almost all over the place in sporting goods stores and stuff like that. Walmart probably even sells them. It's a paracord bracelet. And throw it in there. If they want, if they're the kind of kid that uses paracord and stuff all the time, that's awesome. Just get a length of it and put it in there and give them the paracord bracelet. Again, in case they need it. I don't really know about fashion and what's in fashion, what's out of fashion nowadays. But if those things are, if your kid will wear one and they want to wear one, I mean, why not? Make a lot of ones with their stuff on there, little compasses, little things like that. The one that I have has a little knife built into it. Obviously, for obvious reasons, they probably can't have that. The one that I have has a fire starter on it. I think they have some that have fire starters that have a different kind of striker that wouldn't be considered a blade. They're kind of gimmicky. They're not really great for starting a fire. In theory, you could. As far as other tools, like a multi-tool, I think a lot of schools and places might consider that a weapon. I don't really know. Schools are a far different place. Then they were when I was in school. I had a rifle team. I was on the rifle team. We walked down the hall with weapons. We practiced before school opened. A lot of times school was getting in. We were getting done. We walked down the halls full of kids with weapons. And this wasn't that long ago. I'm not that old. Also, we would hunt behind the school. I grew up, again, I grew up pretty poor in the south. And if you've ever been in that area, unless you're wealthy or own a farm or something like that, at least the area where I grew up, there's not a lot of public land. One of the areas that was public was land owned by the school. It wasn't like a soccer field or a football field. Actually, we were in high school and we hunted behind the middle school. We'd walk through town with our weapons and get behind the school and hunt. Different time. And it's not like we weren't acquainted with violence. I didn't grow up a Christian and I was a far different man back then. Or I guess say I wasn't a man back then. I was a kid. I fought all the time. I fought a lot. Sometimes justified, I think. Sometimes not. I'll be honest, sometimes I fought just because I like to fight. It wasn't nearly the big deal back then. A lot of times a coach or something would just watch kids fight and let them, let them duke it out. Anyway, we fought all the time and we had guns in school. Guns in the truck or whatever. The idea that you would use a gun on another person was just not even considered. Because you used guns, they were part of life, you hunted, you knew what a gun did and that's not what you wanted to do. Apologies for the noise, fellas. That was my Rhodesian Ridgeback going a little crazy. Put him outside. We're all good. Anyway, even though we fought all the time, we didn't use weapons. Unless you kind of like beating a kid's head into a locker or something like that. Not the gun or the weapon that's the problem. It's the evil in a man's heart. Anyway, I digress. Times are different now. You probably can't get away with that. You probably can't even get away with a multi-tool without a blade on it. Even if it had like a pair of pliers and a file. You may be able to get away with one of those little Victorinoxes. I carry one as part of my EDC. It's not my go-to knife. But it's like their smallest knife. And it's really small if you just bought one of those and broke the blade off. So you still had the other tools on it. A file and a screwdriver and tweezers. Now that thing comes in handy all the time. I probably use it as much as I use my big knife. It's good for a lot of stuff. And again, if you remove the blade on one of those... You may be able to have one of those. I'm not sure. It's certainly less of a weapon than a pen or a pencil. You can do a lot of damage with a pen or a pencil. That's a deadly weapon. So I'm not sure on that. I'm not sure what you could get away with in the tool world. One of the things you could probably get away with, I don't carry one of these. 
but this is probably if your kid's handy or you're handy, you like to fix stuff and work on stuff, they make those little mini bit drivers. They make some pretty cool ones that basically look like a pen, but they have the different bits that you use, like Phillips head, flathead torch, and they're inside a tool and you take one out and replace it with the one you want to use. Those are pretty cool. I don't think those would be a problem. Pretty neat thing to have. We touched a little bit on mass shootings and stuff like that. Sadly, that's the world that we live in. I think a real good thing to have in your backpack or in your your child's, your young man's backpack or whomever is a tourniquet and show them how to use it. They'll probably think it's fun. They're pretty fun to do and do to yourself and put on other people, especially if you do it right. They really hurt. But showing them how to put on a tourniquet, how to prep a tourniquet, having a tourniquet or two in their bag, they don't weigh very much. Depending on their size, you may want to consider a rat tourniquet versus a cat tourniquet. It can be used on younger, smaller people and dogs. Whereas the go-to like military cat tourniquet, those are great, but they generally have a minimum size person that they'll work on, like an arm or something like that. They only go so small. The rat's tourniquet will pretty much work on anybody. Not affiliated with them at all, although I am... I do contribute to their Patreon page is Bear Independent. They make really good medical kits, Refuge Medical. And for like a more comprehensive medical kit, I would say look to that. But, you know, if your kid's going to school and they need a band-aid or something, they probably just go to the nurse. But if you need a tourniquet, you need it right now. And if a lot of people need tourniquets, it's best to have one. So again, a tourniquet. That leads me to something else kind of somber is those bulletproof panels. I actually have one in my car door. Just basically a sheet of Kevlar. You can get those not super expensive. If you want them on the cheap, maybe look for a used bulletproof vest on eBay like a police Kevlar vest or something like that and just take the panel out and put it in the back of a backpack. Didn't have that when I was growing up, but again, it's a different world now. So you may want to consider one of those, maybe not. I think a young man ought to carry a knife. I think it's kind of a shame that they can't nowadays usually carry one in school. At least most public schools probably today won't let you have a pocket knife. And that's kind of a shame, but again, you're going to know your son better than I obviously do. When you think they're ready for that knife, think about getting them a knife. My number one recommendation for adults is the Buck 110 Slim. Be the same for... A younger man, a Buck 110 Slim. They also make the one. Tw- the Buck 112 is basically the same thing, slightly smaller blade. You may want to just have a smaller blade. Also, sadly, some states, whether an adult or not, they don't want you to have a blade over three inches. And I think the Buck 112 is under three inches. The Buck 110 is certainly over three inches blade length, I believe. But there's tons of others. I consider those like an heirloom quality. If you give that to a kid as his first knife, they're probably going to have it. I didn't have anything near that nice. I remember my grandma got me a small pocket knife that kind of looks like a smaller version of a Buck 110, but it's a cheap Pakistani knockoff. Again, I was poor, but I still have that thing. And in fact, it is sitting behind me. In fact, I can reach back and touch the bag that it's in. It means a lot. If you look at it, you can tell it's been sharpened a ton. Obviously, your kid's not going to be able to carry that to school, at least not lawfully. But maybe, you know, if your kid's a kind of outdoorsy kid and you pick him up from school and he's going to do something, maybe you hand him that. If you trust your son and they're mature enough for it. That pocket knife obviously meant a lot to me when I got it as a young man. The fact that I still have it. I'm just guessing. I Maybe I was six or seven. Interested in EDC or you're a parent and trying to get your kids interested in EDC, what are you interested in? Carry that. If you're into tools and fixing stuff, those little micro drivers are pretty cool. Kids going to use it, maybe a small roll of duct tape. Duct tape's handy for a lot of stuff. Think about if you're ready or you're ready for your son to be into being more prepared for whatever situation might arise. Two more things I forgot to mention just looking over at some of my stuff and if I had forgotten anything I sure enough did especially if you live in an adverse climate those mylar space blankets those actually work also like an emergency rain poncho they sell at you know one of the big stores that are cheap usually a dollar or two dollars or something 
having one of those just in case you get stuck out in a storm or you could get stuck out in a storm. They weigh very little and again just put them in the front pouch of that backpack. They're cheap. If the kid uses one, buy him another one. They're a dollar or two. Anyway, a lot of ideas there. Hopefully some good ones that you might implement or have your son implement. 